fly that I'm going to be showing today, like all Tenkata flies in my mind, are very simple. This one has the basic material thread, just cotton thread from a dollar store is fine. Um, I have pretty much two colors, like a light one and a dark one, uh, black and gray. Um, hackle, which goes here and I'm going to be pushing it forward, making it a Sakasa style, Sakasa meaning reverse hackle, which is one of the styles of Tenkata Fly, the more characteristic style of Tenkata Fly. Uh, for hackle, I like to have kind of like a brown or olive and a light color like a ginger or you know even a grizzly hackle is fine. You don't need much uh, for tying flies and getting started. This is the only fly pattern that I use. Um, just a simple black thread or simple thread body with hackle that I like to push forward. But today I'm tying one that I really like to use for streams that are faster, uh, times when the stream is running much higher than usual, or places I know there's some big fish and I do want my fly to be as visible as possible, and there might be other bigger bugs in the water. So I'm not trying to imitate a bug by any chance, uh, but if there are large mayflies or crickets or anything else, I might just put on a larger fly. So this one is actually tied on a size 8 hook, a little bit larger than usual. Usually I'll, I probably use size 12 uh, flies, but today I'll be showing a size 8 hook. Very nice and visible. Uh, slightly stiff hackle, not very stiff, just kind of regular hackle. Um, maybe twice as long as the gape of the hook. But again, I'm really not particular about the proportions or anything like that, but just to give you an idea. Um, simple thread body and that'll be it so I'll show you now how to tie this fly build a little bit of a head and I might go I don't know maybe one fifth of the way down or one quarter it kind of depends on where you want to have your hackle I'm not big on proportions I don't think it matters that much uh, but I do make want to make it look relatively good and then I cut my thread with thinner thread, a lot of times you can just break that, uh, but I'm using relatively thick thread and it's, uh, it's kind of hard on the fingers uh, to just break it. And here I have part of a hackle that I used earlier. I like to put the curve facing up and the tip facing forward. Secure it. One, two, three, four. Do a few wraps and going back. And stopping about where you want the hackle to stop. And then now that I have a shorter hackle, it might be a good idea to use a hackle plier. Uh, but you don't need to. Uh, one of the things you can do is just when you wrap. And actually one secret before I do that, you can see here if I try to wrap like this, the curve of the hook is the curve of the feather is gonna try to face back. In order to avoid that, when you're tying it, if it's not facing the way you want, try rubbing the stem of the feather against the hook and going the other direction. So if I go forward, if I go a little bit forward, the curve is going to face back. So maybe I'll try going back and now it's facing forward. So that's nice. One. And one of the secrets with shorter hackles without a hackle plier is like when you do a couple wraps, secure it with your finger uh, so you don't lose it and you don't get it all to spiral back out four or five wraps, it depends on how full you want it. Uh, for this one I'm doing relatively full hackle. I'll do one more here. And, and then you brush it forward and here you have the tip of the feather. So brush it forward, hold it here and pass the thread between your fingers to secure the end of the feather. So now you can see that it's pretty much there. brush it forward and build a little bit of a base behind the hackle and you can see that it's already facing forward and then I'll build a body on the hook and all my body consists of is thread and one thing that you can keep in mind here as a tip if you want to have a fly that is heavier use more thread just do more wraps do twice as much wraps as you need to and that actually can very effectively help sink the fly as well. So in this case, I'm just going to have a not a very large, um, not a very heavy fly necessarily. I just want to have enough of a 
body there to to make it look like a, a bug underwater. Okay, and I'll go around a couple of times. And for this fly, um, it could be done here and this would be enough of a fly. But just for sake of show to make this fly swap a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add a little bit of a bunch. I just think it looks kind of cool. Really not necessary. All I did here is just get a, a little segment of a lighter color thread. Some people might like red. I just took white because it doesn't make a difference, but it, it might increase the contrast enough uh, to make it a little bit more visible. And just a few wraps to make it look like a little egg sac or just to make it look kind of cool. And then I secure this with a couple of wraps. Two or three wraps is enough, doesn't matter. And then I go on to build my body and kind of match the same size as the butt at least. And I kind of like to have it a little bit tapered, so a little bit thicker right behind the hackle. And again, if you use thicker thread, you need fewer wraps of thread around the hook. Um, I do not like using very thin thread, the one they you normally find nowadays for regular fly time, because that's really thin, and you need to do a lot of wrapping uh, to get the body to look, like, you know, to look somehow visible. Okay, and now I have a decent body looking here, and I, and then you finish with a series of girth hitches behind the hackle which is one of the cool things about tying this type of flies where the hackle is facing forward and you're finishing here is that you don't get hackle wrapped up. Essentially the idea is this line is going to be parallel to the hook this line right here is going to secure it in place and you're going to do a few wraps to secure it so again parallel to the hook and I'm going to try to do it slowly so I can show you and each wrap is going to be forward and very close to the next. Uh, you want them to be pretty close. And that's going to give you the most secure way. And as I'm doing this, I'm just going to switch in my finger here. Okay. I'm going to do five or six wraps just to have a very durable fly. And at this point, keep the line tight. Hold it with your fingers so that they don't just kind of like spiral out of control. Then just pull it if I can. Okay, that's your butterfly that I'm doing.